he's a great champion, and, and, and so am I. And um, this guy been wanting to unify the title for for a long time while I was still still climbing the charts and still trying to do my thing to prove that I was a, a qualified champion. And uh, he, he never had the opportunity to unify the title. And uh, it's, I think it's, it's a pleasure and an honor, you know, to fight somebody with his status in the ring. And, and it's going to be a great fight. Brown, 33 victories and only one defeat. Locker, 32 victories and only one defeat. The IBF welterweight champion. The WBC welterweight champion. Two men who will put their friendship aside for 12 rounds or less. We have a fight plan. I don't know Maurice got a fight plan. Man, you know, since I've been a champ, uh, we haven't been sparring at all since then. So I know that we are both have learned a lot, you know, since we both have been a champ and have been sparring together. So, you know, it's some things that we'll know them, even though we know each other real good, but it's still some things that we'll learn since we've been a champ that the other one may not know. Neither one of us is going to take this personal. I mean, this is not a personal thing. This is a competitive sport. I think we were going to, we just, we, we got two great champions. It'll be a five inch reach advantage for Blocker. And to the rules for this world championship bout. The 10 point must system is in effect. Three judges scoring the fight. No standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. And a fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the final round. Brown blocker for the IBF WBC unification welterweight title. Up we go to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout coming your way is one of our featured events scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing as we present the IBF WBC World Welterweight Unification Championship. This bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, the President, Robert Lee, Supervisor, Walter Stone, along with the World Boxing Council President, Jose Suleiman, and the Supervisor, Spider Bynum. Introducing the officials as appointed. Judging at ringside, we have Frank Brunette, Patricia Jarman, Lou Filippo, and the referee in charge of this bout, Mills Lane. Fight fans, here we go. 12 round World Welterweight Unification Championship. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing white trunks and hailing from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. His weight this evening was already 146 pounds with a fine record of 32 wins, only one loss with 18 wins by way of knockout. He is the WBC welterweight champion of the world known as the Thin Man, Maurice Blocker. And his opponent across the ring. On my left, fighting out of the red corner in this 12-round championship bout. He is wearing black trunks, and he is fighting out of Germantown, Maryland. His weight this evening, 147 pounds. His outstanding record, 33 wins, only one loss, with 25 big wins by way of knockout. He is the IBF welterweight champion of the world, Simon Brown. Once again, here's your referee in charge, Mills Lane. All right, come on. Come on. Any more? All right, come here. All right, now we've already gone through the instruction in the dressing room one time. You've had to protect yourself at all times. Any questions over here? Any questions over here? Let's get it on. Come on.
Here we go, round one, scheduled for 12. The unification title. Oh, oh. A, a wild left there by Simon Brown to get things going. But not before he got clocked by Blocker. Blocker landed a nice hook. Simon's trying to come back with something of his own. I tell you what, <laughs> both those punches had a lot of steam, Simon's and Blocker's. Simon Brown of the black trunks, Maurice Blocker in the white trunks. Best friends since 16 years of age. Five years ago, they said they would never fight each other. Five years have passed. Now they have temporarily put their friendship aside. Both come from the same boxing stable. They had the same manager, the same trainer, the same promoter until recently. Uh, they were at each other's weddings. They've gone out on family outings together. And uh, they've done just, just about everything together. And they say we, we never thought we'd actually fight each other. Well, now they're fighting together. And right now it's Simon stalking and Blocker fighting in, in uh, as a counter puncher. Letting Simon Brown come on with hooks. Right now, neither one of them using a jab effectively. They're trying to load up on punches. They've got to relax a little bit and get into their fighting uh, plan. Brown on the black trunks asks himself, what am I doing this for? Why am I fighting? my best friend well money might be uh, one of the reasons i think that may be the only reason a lot of chatter from the corners the thin man maurice blocker in the white is the wbc welterweight champ simon brown of the black trunks the ibf champ brown's nickname is montakia his last fight a first round knockout of ozzy o'neill december 8th and Maurice Blocker's last fight, a decision over Marlon Starling in August of 1990 for the WBC title. This is his first fight since winning the title. And ironically, Ferdy, that victory by Blocker avenged the loss of his pal, Simon Brown, who is fighting it out. Because the Brown lost to Starling. Mills Lane, right in control of the fight from the opening bell, so don't grab him behind the head. Right now. The jab of uh, Blocker is doing a job on Simon. Simon keeps coming on. Simon Brown coming on. But the jab and the hooks of Blocker are landing much more effectively. Simon Brown, a quick and powerful natural welterweight, has not received the publicity of a Meldrick Taylor, for example, or a Hector Camacho, Greg Hogan, or Bruno Whitaker. But uh, he is ballyhooed in the world of boxing as one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters. Many people say if it wasn't for Chavez, he would be considered the best. That's a lot, a load of, uh, of praise. Let's see what tonight brings. Brown's only defeat, a split decision to Marlon Starling. As the first round comes to an end. Give me nice and warm. That's what are you doing? I got it. Okay. What are you doing? Yo, yo. What are you doing? Come on, baby. Let's play with him. Come on, no. This is the voice of Emil Griffin, no. the welter and middleweight champion. He's disgusted with Simon Brown. Let's listen. Chest or his belly. Okay? Slip and slide and move the jab. Are his chest or his belly? When you do this, punch. Don't do this and don't punch. That left hand popping. You got him lunging now. Get that jab and swing. Lunging the corner. In the corner. Round two scheduled for 12. A much calmer scene in the blocker uh, corner, uh, led by the legendary Eddie Futch. Blocker surrounds himself, interestingly, with heavyweight boxing people. He's promoted by. Uh, Butch Lewis, managed by Michael Spinks. His trainer is uh, Eddie Futch. All, all big names. Yeah, they should be satisfied. He took that first round by boxing superbly, putting a jab in Simon Brown's face and keeping him off when he came in. Emil Griffin, the voice you heard, was correct in saying, hey, punch when you come in. Griffith, five-time world champion. We mentioned Brown's lone defeat. Blocker's only loss, a 12-round decision to Lloyd Huntington for the WBC crown in 1987. Mills Lane, who always has control. District attorney from Reno, Nevada. Well, he's now a judge. He's now the district judge, a prestigious legal position. How much of, uh, how 
must have missed that uh, election. Combination by Maurice Blocker. Blocker's just busier than Simon Brown. He's just scoring points. Simon looks like he's waiting to load up, but just as soon as he gets in range, the superior boxing skill of Blocker ties him up. Brown is Excellent boxing by Blocker. Brown is the stronger of the two, but Maurice Blocker using finesse and so far having the upper hand. Wonderful exhibition of jabbing and hooking off the jab by Blocker. He's busy. The screaming in the background is from Michael Spinks and Butch Lewis, who handle Maurice Blocker. Well, you get the feeling that Brown is looking to really get down to serious punching here, and he's just wa waiting for this guy to wear out of all this little dibby-dab punching, but that little punching is winning him the round. There's a right by Simon Brown. That's what he wants. He wants to end this on a knockout. And Blocker comes back with a combination. So things really heating up now. Two of the best welterweights in the world, and it's a beautiful boxing ex exhibition against a determined Simon Brown. It looks like Brown is just waiting his time to land a haymaker in there and turn this around. And round two coming to a conclusion. And that'll do it. A late punch by Simon Brown, but it made no contact. Two rounds complete. Here at the Mirage, let's go to Suzette Charles, who is ringside. I'm sitting here ringside with the trainer, Pepe Correa, who trained both Simon Brown and, and Maurice Blocker when they were teenagers. Tell me what your feelings are about the fight at this point. Well, at this point, I'm, I, well, it breaks my heart to see him fight, but I tell you, uh, right now, I see Simon begin to walk through Maurice's punches. Um, at first, I thought it would be a 50-50 fight, but it's not working that way. Simon's begin to walk through his punches. However, he's walking through, but he's keep dropping his right hand, and Maurice is connected with that left hook, so we don't know what's going to happen right now. I have to watch a couple more rounds and let you know. Who do you think will win? Right now, uh, at 64, I'm going to lean toward uh, Brown. It was 50-50, but I'm going 64 towards Brown. He's walking through more recent punches. Thank you very much. Pepe Correa, back to Steve. All right, thank you, Suzette. <laughs> Round three, scheduled for 12 for the unification of the WBC and IBF welterweight uh, titles. Well, I'll tell you what, they're best friends outside of the ring, but they fight as if they're enemies. Well... As Correa just said, Brown has been looking to unload with serious punches. He's been getting outpointed in the first two rounds, but he is beginning to walk through these punches. That's what I meant when I said he's looking for that haymaker for that solid punch. And he opened this round with a series of stiff jabs, as if to say, you're not the only guy that can jab. I'm going to get into that with you. So Brown looks like he's coming on, but he's, um, he is faced with a good boxer in Maurice Blocker. There's a right by Simon Brown. That's that haymaker we said he's waiting for. He landed it. So Simon Brown coming back. Brown says, hey, they, they beat on each other for free for six years. We might as well get paid for it now. And the two are earning their money. Now Brown going to the body with uppercut. And, and it so often does, that one strong punch. Turned it around. Blocker now fighting a little bit more fearfully and more carefully than he was before. Blocker on the defensive. Will Simon Brown look to clean up on his good buddy, Maurice Blocker, here? You can bet when the um, when you're inside there, there is no good buddy. I mean, if you can get him out, you're more merciful to get him out fast. There's a combination to the head by Blocker. A good bounce back. The difference is not much on Blocker's punches, whereas it's everything on Simon Brown's punches. Whereas before, 
Locker for the first two rounds was outspeeding him and just the quantity of punches were winning the round for him. Now Brown is landing hard punches and the effectiveness of Locker's punches have now gone out. Steam's gone out. Maybe it just took a little while for Brown to get warmed up. And it is cold here. Temperature, I would say right now, in the high 50s. And it's windy. There's a right by Simon Brown that got a piece of Locker's face. Brown has got what Tyson calls evil intentions. He has got a determined looking face and his punches are sharp and hard. Simon Brown has turned this thing around. There's a, a miss by Blocker. Now Brown going to the jab. Oh, a hard left by Simon Brown that stunned Maurice Blocker. Final seconds, round three. Blocker looking to capitalize, but Brown covering up. Three rounds in the books. Go back to boxing. I know you're all right. Go back to boxing. You're smart with that. You ain't got to be in there fighting like that. Box this man. Use your reach. When you turn that man, when you turn that man right there, he's wide open for you to make him pay. You turn that man, keep taking him in that circle. Stop backing up straight back. See, go off to the side. See, he's waiting for you to pull back before you go to the left hook, okay? Let's go, take a look at that punch, which changed the complexion of this fight around. He's starting to get, you see that combination, there were two punches there, that start to uh, change Blocker's mind about this whole thing. I mean, it, up to this point, he was bipping and bopping him very beautifully, and all of a sudden, that good right hand that Simon Brown threw caught his attention right there, almost behind the ear, and then a left. And look at the effect of that left hook behind it. Well, that's the kind of thing that turns fights around. Let's see if Blocker can recover and go back to his beautiful boxing. This is round four, and a quick left by Simon Brown. Series of unanswered punches. In this corner, he was told by Eddie Futch, you don't need to fight with this guy. Go back to that beautiful boxing. Let's see if he can. That's what he did over the first couple of rounds, and it was effective. But Simon Brown seems to be in tune right now. Yeah, his, <laughs> his engine's running. I mean, he, he is looking at golden pastures here. Brown looking very confident. Talking his friend Maurice Blocker. Solid right by Blocker. Uppercut by Blocker that got through. Well, Blocker's landing two, three punches and then moving away before Simon Brown can get started. So Simon better initiate the action and not wait to counter punch because Blocker's not there when the party's over. Good right hand by Block by uh, Simon Brown. A thunderous right delivered by Simon Brown. And the combination by Brown, he lands with another right. Blocker showing he's got a good chin. There's a nifty right uppercut by Brown. A left by Brown. And then Blocker comes back with the left of his own. Now a combination by Blocker. Oh, and they open it up. Airing it up. Unbelievable. Furious exchange. Now those are two guys not boxing. They're fighting. It has turned into a total slugfest. And that's hard to judge. Simon Brown, more effective punches. But Blocker, better boxing and more number of punches. It just doesn't look like Blocker has the strength of Simon Brown. The punches are completely different. In spite of the furious pace of this round, both men unmarked. No swelling, no lumps, nothing. Just looks like they're just starting the first round. They're completely fresh. Oh, nice hammering right hand by Simon Brown. Oh, a low blow by Blocker. 
And a hard left by Brown. Boy, he answered back. I don't know how much more of this kind of punishment Rocker can take before he starts to really slow down. That's major punishment that Simon inflicted in that round. What a round. Don't give this man this fight. Don't give this man this fight, Simon. You get close. Keep digging, Simon. You got him. You the jab with your clothes shot. Don't be on head and shoulder, head and shoulder, and drop the right hand that box your body like we've been doing in the gym. You gotta be in there. Griffin wants toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Well, well, this is what he wants. This is what Emil Griffin wants. Stand there and trade with Blocker. Now watch the difference. Blocker, more punches. Simon, stronger punches. Hard to judge this toe-to-toe -to -toe action, but it is brisk when two incredibly good welterweights are just laying it out. Where's the mouthpiece? I didn't take it out. Where's the mouthpiece? Here, I got it. I got it. Round five, scheduled for 12. Let's see if they can pick up where they left off off that frenetic exchange in the fourth round. Well, I'm on my card and officially, I have it dead even right now. Blocker taking those first two rounds, boxing beautifully, and then Simon beginning to unload with the hard stuff and walking right through Blocker. And neither seems to be the worst for wear despite the punishment they're dishing out. I think the cumulative effect of punches has to be greater on Blocker, who is taking some very hard right hands and left hooks to the head by Simon Brown, who's a much harder puncher. Oh, a right by Blocker. That Brown walked right into him. Brown comes back with a left. Whoa. A wild miss by Brown. Oh, these guys are going for a home run. They're batting. They're trying to bat for home runs here. Mills Lane with his work cut out. Yeah, Simon wants to punch. Blocker, once he lands three or four shots, ties him up. And it's up to Mills Lane to come in here and get this action started again. You've seen a lot of cute tricks of boxing here by Maurice Blocker. He's holding behind the head. He's spinning. He's giving him all kind of angles now. Simon Brown has given him the laces, hitting on the break. Everything is happening in this fight. This is not friendly. Brown looking to end it with one punch. Oh, what an uppercut by Brown. He almost ended it there, but Blocker stays on his feet. Another, I, I think that's the first sign I've seen of Blocker weakening. His legs did a number after that second uppercut. But Blocker showing tremendous heart. Hang it in there. There is some blood around the eye of Blocker now. Another shot by Brown. A I right cross. I don't know how much more this Blocker can take. He's getting hammered. The mouthpiece of Maurice Blocker flew out with one of those uppercuts. Brown looking to put an end to things here in the fifth round, but Blocker won't go down. And a right by Blocker that connected. What a hard on Blocker. He's fighting back as hard as he can. He won't go down against his friend. Simon Brown, now Mills Lane wants to get the mouthpiece back to Blocker. At a pause in the action, he gets that mouthpiece in. That's a good piece of work by Mills Lane because the kind of hammering he's taking, he can lose some teeth. Final seconds of round five, and that'll do it. That damage here was done by that hammering uppercut that Simon Brown threw. Look at that. 
lifted his head right up. Another one lifted his head right up. That's enough to knock out anybody. Followed by hooks and devastation is on the way. The face of Maurice Blocker showing it by a cut. And no question about it, Simon Brown is taking command. Here we go, round six, scheduled for 12 for the unification of the WBC and IBF welterweight championships. And it has been war between these two close friends, Brown and Blocker. What you got to admire about Maurice Blocker, not only is he a fine fighter, but the heart on him, he got hammered enough to just hold or run, and he just stood there and traded with him, knowing the danger that that represented for him. He should have just grabbed him and held on, but boy, there's a lot of heat up here in this ring. And there's probably nothing each one does not know about the other. Well, right now, Blocker knows that Simon Brown can punch harder than he can. I'm sure he knew that coming in but able to withstand the pressure dished out by Brown not much on the punches of Maurice Blocker he's still throwing them but there's no zip and no zing to it so let's see if Brown can capitalize a wild miss by Brown there's a left by Brown that tag Blocker Blocker showing tremendous courage that cut on the brow will be a factor by Blocker. It's well controlled. Oh, a nice hook right off the chin of Blocker. Simon Brown throws a hook with a devastation in, in mind. There's a right by Maurice Blocker, the thin man with the spindly legs hanging tough against the much stronger Simon Brown. The problem is that he lands the punches. They do nothing to uh, dissuade Simon Brown from coming in with his hard series of punches. There's nothing on the punches of Maurice Blocker right now. Come on, get him out, get him out, Simon. I'll fight you. Those inside punches by Blocker having no impact. Simon seeming to have gone to sleep this round. He's not, oh, that was a winging fight punch, but it didn't land solidly. It was a winging punch by Simon that drew an ooh and an ah from the crowd, but it didn't land. Actually, he's not very active compared to what he was in the last two rounds, Simon Brown. Under 30 seconds, round six. I guess they had to take somewhat of a break after what happened in the previous round. Combination by Blocker, but Brown covering up. Punch out, two hands to see. Come on, punch out. Wild miss again by Brown as we head for the bell. All right, one step back. Come on, come on. Hey, hey, hey. Coming up after this bout. Five-time world champion Julio Cesar Chavez making final preparations in his dressing room, getting set for the WBC Super Lightweight and IBF Junior Welterweight the championship. He is an incredible 73-0, 60 knockouts. He'll face fifth-ranked John Super D. Duplessis, tough kid from the main streets of New Orleans. And there he is, another legend, Julio Cesar Chavez. Five separate titles to his credit. Tremendous record. And he's done that in three uh, separate weight classes. No, no question the pound for pound uh, best fighter in the world in my estimation. And he is a legend at the top of his form. Maywell round seven of a scheduled 12 rounder. Action packed. Maurice Blocker dictated the pace with some good boxing skills over the first couple of rounds, and Simon Brown came around and tried to lower the boom and end this with one punch. And a couple of rounds ago, we saw frenetic exchanges, very entertaining to the big crowd here at the Mirage. Well, he took three rounds in a row, did Brown, and then all of a sudden, curiously, went to sleep this last round and let Blocker punch in bunches and, and uh, tie him up and technically he won that uh, that round so you know what we got an even fight it's 56 to 56 
If you if you weren't scoring, just looking at it, you'd say Simon Brown is just working up on the Blocker. But if you scored him round uh, by round, that last one belonged to Blocker. A lot of different punches, even though they're pity pat, and then he ties them up. That was a good example. He just brought them. Brown on the black trunks, Blocker on the white. Brown mentions a possible future opponent someday for Julio Cesar Chavez, who we just saw getting ready for his fight next. Those punches not having much steam by Blocker. But he's punching, and Simon's not. That, that was the history of the last round. Good right hand. Good, strong right hand, but one punch doesn't around make. Simon's got to go back to that active style that he had for those middle three rounds there, three, four, and five. Midway through the seventh. as if Simon is saying, well, that doesn't hurt me. I'm just waiting till I can land a real good shot, but he blows the points that way. Blocker accumulating the points, but Brown looking for that one big opening to end it. Well, he's going to get hollered at by Griffiths. I'd like to hear what Griffiths says. This is Brown's eighth title defense. Coming in, arguably, the best of the welterweight champions. For Blocker, his first fight since winning the WBC title. Blocker fighting purely a defensive fight. He's not fighting to knock out Simon. He's fighting to keep from getting knocked out, but he's not getting hit in the meantime. I mean, one or two punches that, that Simon Brown lands is not enough to take a round. So an ineffective round like this still is a big round. Well, Maurice Blocker's manager, the former light heavyweight and heavyweight champion Michael Spinks, is going to have laryngitis at the end of this night. He has been screaming from the Blocker corner. Here's what it sounded like the last round. Time up! He's waiting for a turn, Reese. Don't give him none. Time up! He's waiting for a turn. Don't give him nothing. The other voice was from Butch Lewis, his promoter. Michael Spinks showing good lateral movement in that sequence. Break that round. Time up. Boxing. Time up. Move. We have made it all the way to round eight, scheduled for 12. Steve Albert, the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, ringside with Jim Hill and Suzette Charles at the Mirage in Las Vegas. This is to unify the WBC and IBF welterweight championships. Two close friends, Simon Brown of the black trunks, Maurice Blocker in the white. And it has been a good one. Well, Simon better get himself back in this fight. Or else Blocker will do what uh, Michael Spinks did so many, so many uh, fights. He just kind of sneaks you out, wins each round, and uh, therefore he became the heavyweight champion of the world by doing this to home twice. I mean, you know, this is the kind of Michael Spinks fight. Technically, he, he pop, 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 grabs you, gives you no angle, doesn't go straight back. Look at him. Move, move, grab him. Grab him behind the head. Look at this. All Michael Spinks stuff. Good strategy being employed by Maurice Blocker. He knows that one punch by Brown could end it. But in the meantime, he is picking up points with some swift boxing tactics. Well, this is the kind of fight that if Blocker won on points, there would be loud booing. But you know what? Slowly but surely. I mean, he wins these rounds. you got to give it to him. Simon is just not doing anything. Simon Brown out of Clarendon, Jamaica, lives in Germantown, Maryland. Blocker in nearby Washington, D.C. Past the halfway point of round eight. 
Walker 32 and one with 18 knockouts. Brown 33 and one with 25 knockouts. They are almost mirror images as far as their records are concerned. What happened to that great uppercut? What happened to Simon Brown's great uppercut? He just forgot about it. It had almost caused devastation and ruin to Blocker, and he hasn't thrown it. Well, Ferdy, their records may be similar, but as we have seen through almost eight rounds, their styles are totally different. Totally different. One guy's a banger wants to come in and fight, and the other guy is a technical fight. Ooh, nice right hand, but it missed by Blocker. Good idea. Just didn't land. Now Brown looking to chase Blocker around the ring. But while he's chasing, he's eating jabs. You can't just give it for aggression. Aggression that has nothing at the end of it is a waste of time. Brown has to be getting frustrated. Blocker continues to elude Brown's uh, arsenal. And while he's eluding, he's popping the jab. He's not just running, he's jabbing. Now here's where Simon should step in and but he let him go. He should step in right there and go two-handed to the body. And another wild miss by Brown as the bell sounds to end round eight. We're at the beautiful and luxurious Mirage Hotel, the outdoor arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Capacity 15,800 coming up to the main event between Mike Tyson and Razor Ruddick, Steve Albert, the fight doctor, Freddy Pacheco. You're holding you with one hand, punch for the other. When you get close, Simon, move the hands. Stop being all the punch. Take your time, get position, dig it to the body, dig it to the body. Dig it to the body hard. Wait a minute, boy. You understand it's two things. You can use his head on it there. You stay outside and use your left hand. Keep that man at bay. You find yourself here, you walk him out there. Yeah. Stay on the inside with him so he's going up. Okay. okay. Round nine scheduled for 12. How did that cut look over the... Uh, it looks very well. Very well taken care of by Jim Strickland. He's doing an excellent job. It hasn't opened up anymore. It has not become a factor. And, of course, what the corner told him is what he really must do. Keep the movement. Keep the jab going. Don't let him stop and punch with you. It may not be the most exciting fight doing that, but it is what's got him slightly ahead now. Blocker, I'm, I'm speaking of. Yeah, the cut over the lower brow of Maurice Blocker in the white trunks. Again, Brown trying to penetrate with a heavy left, but not having a, the kind of impact he would like. Griff, Emil Griffin instructions were go to the body. Get him down from the bicycle, but you can't hit the body when a guy is on a bicycle running like that. You've got to cut him off and fight with him on the ropes. You've got to crack him in the corner. Simon Brown is not doing that. And Blocker playing a little turn on the head of Simon Brown. Simon Brown better get on track. It's been a long, long uh, three rounds since the fifth. And he needs to have a good round to get back in this fight. Once again, let me uh, say, as we've both experienced on so many nights, it's a, when it's a tough fight like this to score, God only knows how right the judges are looking at it. But uh, Locker is doing an exceptional job of defensive fighting. Yes, we have seen some adventurous nights in the scoring category. It's a cool, blustery night here in Las Vegas. Not affecting these guys. Simon Brown with a hard left. That's the first good punch that he's landed. And look, three, four, five, six, seven punches. Oh, out. brother. Maurice Blocker snapping Brown's head back with one of those punches. See, he punches and budges and then moves away. That's pure Michael Spinks. And if he gets too close, he ties him up. That way you can win an awful lot of rounds. And it's, I think what's happening is he's frustrating Simon Brown an awful lot. I think Blocker is fighting a brilliant tactical fight here. Stick and move. He knows he can be out-muscled by his friend Simon Brown, but he's compensating. Now Simon Brown just gave him the laces and then he hit him on the break. Not too nice for neighbor. So much for close friends. Come on, come on. 
Less than 20 seconds in round nine. Earlier we saw Irish Pat Lauder stop Roberto Duran in the sixth round as Duran hurt his shoulder. And a shot by Brown at the bell. And we are through nine rounds. Some of the celebrities on hand. That looks like Jack Nicholson. Yes, turn around, Jack. There's the Joker. Kevin Costner dancing with wolves. He knows where the camera is. Always a star studded crowd at a big fight night. You box this man. You let him bring his face in the face. We get off the rope fast or tie him up. Don't fight him when you're on the rope. This is the kind of action that's winning these rounds for Blocker. It's at Flurry, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We didn't see, but they were there. And we've hit double figures. Round 10 scheduled for 12 for the unification. And let me tell you, it's getting dangerous for Simon. Yes. Simon might have evened out that last round. Uh, if it was an even round, they're ahead. 86-84 is Blocker. Now, oh, now Simon is stepping up the gas. Brown uh, showing some urgency here. He has to. He has to. He, he has to fight like this. Sensing perhaps that he is behind on points. You never know what goes, goes on. There he goes. Blocker is down. And Brown wants more. He is deeply hurt. He might get up, but he's going to be in terrible shape. He got up on it. No. That may not. That may not. A lot of time. Simon being too close gave him a lot of time extra. And a lot of time left in the 10th round. Two minutes. Well, friendship is flying out the window. That knockdown came with about 50 seconds into round 10. And now Brown stalking. Blocker and trying to end it here in the 10th. Can Blocker hold on? Well, we can only depend on the kindness of Mills if this really gets tough. Because Simon has got evil intention in his eyes. He wants this knockout and he needs it. Hard punches to the body by Simon Brown being covered by Blocker. If, if these guys are friends, I'd hate to see them fight if they were enemies. A slapping right by Brown. And there is still all kinds of time remaining. Well, Simon has got a minute, and that's an awful world of time when you're pressing a guy that's hurt. He's got to press. He's got to get him out of here. He's got to clean this up. There's a left and a right. Another combination by Brown. Let him fall. That's it. Mills Lane. The kindness of Mills Lane has stopped this fight. Simon Brown wins. And it is all over. Blocker looked over at Mills Lane, and he said, I agree. Of course. Meanwhile, Simon Brown wants to get in there and console his friend. Yeah, that was a very, very tough round that Simon Brown scored an early knockdown, and it was too much time left for Blocker to be able to recover. The question was, could he get to him before the bell? And of course he could. And it was the good judgment and sensibleness of Mills Lane that stopped and gave the victory to uh, Simon without having to belabor and possibly hurt Maurice Blocker, his good friend. Outstanding action-packed fight. Simon Brown stopping his friend Maurice Blocker here in round number 10. Pepe Correa saying it's over. This had to be mentally exhausting for Brown and Blocker. Now both fighters uh, have to go home and, and hope they never have to look at this tape again because it was it was a tough night for both men emotionally. Let us take a look at what got Blocker in such trouble right at the beginning of the round, and that was his problem. He got stopped too early. That right hand was hard, but the hook 
was devastating. Down goes Blocker. He's lucky he got up. I mean, truthfully, he's lucky he got up. It's a surprising. Look at Brown, though. Surprising to see the reaction of Simon Brown to come right on top of his best friend like that. Surprising. How about uh, Simon Brown's reaction? He wanted to get more of his friend. Blocker. Well, as you can see, there's really no. There was almost no point in letting it go beyond that because that was a resounding knockdown. It was just the courage of Blocker that got him up. Of course, it is a championship fight, and he has to let him continue. But let's let's take a look at that knockdown again. It was just a, a, a wonderful left hook right on the button. I mean, you just don't get hit that hard and not go down by a puncher of the devastating quality of Simon. Simon Brown can punch, and, and his aggressiveness is such that he just hovered over him. Let's take a look at oh, an overhand shot. Whoa. These punches that blockers are throwing are so hard. Look at this left hook. Just a perfect left hook. Look at the eyes. Look at the eyes of Maurice Block. He almost senseless. He doesn't quite see, but there's someone over him, and it's blurred, and he gets up. What, what a finish for an exciting fight. Gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, ten seconds in round number ten. The referee in charge, Mills Lane, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout, the IBF and the new WBC welterweight champion of the world, Simon Brown. In what had to be a painful experience, mentally exhausting for Simon Brown, physically for Maurice Blocker, and Simon Brown unifies the welterweight title. He is now both the IBF and WBC welterweight uh, champion. Meldrick Taylor, the WBA champ, is in the crowd here tonight. Everybody aware of the story here. You even saw Mills Lane uh, hugging Maurice Blocker. Let's take uh, some more looks at the end of the fight. Well, with a minute left to go, you could sense that Blocker knew, I gotta get this thing finished right now. His, he pressed the attack. Look, take a look at Mills Lane. I mean, there's a guy ready to charge in there, and he does. And it, it was justified. Cannot argue with that. Let's take another view, and you can see that these shots were beginning to score right on the button. That's too much punishment to ask a guy to take. That shot right there was supposed to be the last punch of this fight. You don't ask a man to take much more than that. It'll be uh, very interesting to to hear the post-fight comments between these two young men. Sulaiman and Don King right now. Sulaiman is the WBC giving him his belt and telling him he is now the WBC champion as well. He's unified the title. Don King between them. Great fight! I love you, man. Maurice Blocker has to relinquish the WBC belt. Way. Hugs all around okay, for the, the victorious Simon Brown, but Blocker's showing a lot of heart. Here at the Mirage in Las Vegas, Nevada, we just...